very big welcome. Delighted that you joined us. Reimagining the future, idea as a key driver. So I'm Jenny Watson. I'm with Education Scotland, part of Joan's team, um, who's here as well, curriculum design, and delighted Elizabeth here as well from the team. And co-presenting this with Julia, who I'll let introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Julia Fenby and I work on the creativity programme within Education Scotland. So very warm welcome. So just in the spirit, I know you've all pulled up a chair to the campfire. We're going to be creative bravery film just to get us going to set the scene. I love all the wee clips and um, images that have been put together for this festival. This is going to be very much an interactive session. We want it to be a discussion. Um, so we're really interested to hear, you know, what brought you to this session? So if you don't mind just adding your thoughts in the chat pane, if you can't access the chat pane, please feel free just to talk. But why are you here? We're really interested to hear, hear that. So while, the, while you're typing, I'll just explain again that I'm going to read out the some of the chat comments for Jenny's benefit because she, as presenting, she's not able to see them at the moment. Um, Penny, hey, lovely to see you here. Said she's really enjoying the festival and just really interested in creativity and interdisciplinarity. Um, Jane wants to find out what IDL is and how it works and can be applied. Um, we've got Heather who's doing her PGDE in primary education and keen to learn more. Um, Paul said everything should be IDL and Jenny uh, is sharing that view. Why can't we break down the barriers of single subject learning? C, not sure your, your first name, C Dunhill, interested to hear what others are doing. Um, she's, or he is loving the pupil interaction and teacher creativity in our school. Ailes is interested in any updated guidance. Um, Engage Scotland, curious to know more, um, agrees that everything, all, all learning should be ideal. Please keep adding the chat pane, but we'll move on. And, you know, people have said, why? Why IDL? It's been really interesting to reflect over the last few years. You know, we're living in a changing world, uncertain times. There's been talk about skills for the future, meta skills, not just in Scotland, but systems around the world. And this quote that's on the screen really resonated with me that just came out last week. And there does seem to be a real grasp to do things differently now. I think during lockdown, we had that chance to stop, reflect, pause and think. How can we make it better for our young people? How can we really reimagine learning? How can we equip them with these skills? And really that why is all about the skills and the tributes that we want our young people to have so that they can meet this uncertain future that we're all facing that's been amplified, obviously, in the last few months. Really interesting to reflect on our curriculum for excellence in Scotland and the refresh narrative, which was launched last year, very much focused back on the four capacities, the why of our curriculum, the purpose, that opportunity to enable all our young people to be the successful learners, the responsible citizens. And if you look really carefully at the skills and tributes behind those, you can see those lifelong learning, those skills, those creativity. Looking at the skills for the future, which is more recent, you know, that, that came out just a couple of years ago, but they actually match the, the great synergy with the four capacities. And really, you know, this IDL offers so much to help our young people to be equipped with these skills. So I think it's really important to think why we're doing this. So I've given you one of the reasons why. For me, it's all about ensuring our young people have the highest quality learning opportunities that are really relevant and meaningful for them. 
But I'd like to turn it back to you and say, why IDL? What can it offer? And can you add your thoughts in the chat pane so we can gather the expertise within the room? Uh, I, I, I mean, this is my life's work, really. I'm really passionate about creativity in education and creative pedagogy, uh, thinking about um, sustainability, thinking about interdisciplinarity, uh, and especially around um, social, cognitive and environmental justice. So yes, I'm, uh, this is very exciting. Um, Paul said IDL is the sticky that allows knowledge to be felt. It should be purposeful and meaningful. Andy says co-creating the learning puts the learner at the centre. Experiential skills based learning teamwork challenge. That resonates with a lot of my thoughts about that relevance and, you know, that pupil voice sentiment around the learner um, so that they're motivated and engaged. Ideal experiences can support engagement. This is Lindsay saying this, uh, bringing learning to life, making connections and providing meaning. And Ailsa says, yeah, relevant, engaging and meaningful experiences. Thank you. Please keep adding your chat to the chat pane. Um, and I think, you know, when you do see IDL, you know, I've got lots of examples in my mind of when I've seen it working really well and the engagement of the young people, the way they can articulate the skills, their tributes, helping them see those meaningful pathways. Um, and I think it's when it happens and they're excited about it, they're engaged and, you know, that whole raising aspirations, achievement as well as an attainment. And for me, that's why I'm passionate about it, because I feel, you know, it offers so much. Um, moving on, you know, what matters? Um, it's been really interesting in the refresh narrative. Again, in our curriculum for excellence, we have the four contexts. And they've been there right from the very start of CFE, years and years ago. But when we did the refresh narrative, we put them in this visual form. And it seemed to really make people think differently about it. But when we were going around with the roadshow, the refresh narrative, which myself and Joan and Elizabeth were very much involved in, it was really interesting to listen to what people were saying in schools and settings. Lots happening in the curriculum areas, ethos and life, opportunity of personal achievement. But the IDL, interdisciplinary learning, it got really mixed reactions. We got, you know, people saying, oh, are we supposed to be doing that? I thought we didn't do that anymore. Is that still part of our curriculum? to people giving really rich examples that were really engaging the young people and making such a difference. And, you know, we've seen this inconsistency across our schools and our settings. And really, you know, this feeling that interdisciplinary learning is the untapped potential, the opportunity. And again, you know, during COVID-19, we've seen that being amplified again, that that real quest to look at this more closely and see if we can further the aspirations and maximize it. So really it was that thought in mind that um, Joan and Elizabeth, myself and the curriculum innovation team thought that it'd be a really good idea to have a fresh look at IDL, to get a group of people together from across Scotland. And we looked at two different themes, learner pathways and interdisciplinary learning. And this happened between January and March of last year. It was very much, we worked with a design company. It was very much a co-design creation. Um, it was a very safe space. In each work stream, there were 40 people from across Scotland from all different, you know, we had partners from Scottish government, from settings and primary universities, colleges, secondary schools, partner organizations, a whole spectrum of different people. Um, and it was a very safe space, so it allowed for really bold, brave conversations to take place. And um, the first sessions were between January and March, and then COVID hit. So for the IDL, the last sessions actually took place virtually. And, um, you know, it's quite hard to imagine it was actually only a few months ago that, you know, we had our, our second meeting with IDL in Stirling in a hotel with us all together. You know, that now seems like such a long time ago. But what was really interesting when people came back together during the lockdown and to have the final session to pull together the thought paper was again this increased energy, this increased will to really look at IDL and see if we could use that in the way forward. 
So the thought papers are up there, they're in the um, resource, in the toolbox, in the, um, there's a link also on this website, on this, sorry, PowerPoint that will be shared later. And they're there really to generate discussions, fresh thinking, and to really, you know, look carefully at IDL again. And we'd really welcome this conversation with you today to start those conversations and to see what people are doing out there. Somebody said earlier on, you know, what is IDL? And it's not only in Scotland that we're really grappling with this. Across the world, people are grappling with what is IDL? And it's called different things in different countries. But in the thought paper, this was the definition that people came up with. And this was very much the collective thought of this is what we agreed in that room with the people that we felt was a good explanation of IDL. So I'll just let you read that. And then just as you're reading it, you know, really interesting to get your reflections. Do you feel this is a coherent description? Is there anything missing? What do you feel? Again, just come in and chat or use a chat pane. Jenny, can I just come in? It's Cameron uh, here from, from Kemeny. Can I just come in on that paragraph? Um, what really resonates with me and what we're doing in school um, is, is the planned experience and, and the, that wording, the execute as one. I think that's really important. Um, and for the pupils to realise that, um, unlike other curricular areas, the ideal experience is where planned learning takes place across the curricular areas. Thank you. Cameron, just when you're there as well, because I, um, I caught up with Cameron yesterday just by chance, and you were talking about how you've been thinking differently about how you timetable. I think that would fall into this area as well. Sure. Um, okay, just to share with, with folk. Um, uh, so my name is Cameron McKenzie. I'm the principal teacher of the curriculum in Kemney Academy in the northeast of Scotland. And we have... We have been working quite hard over the last well number of years um, to work on IDL experiences in our school for our pupils. Uh, where we're at just now in this session 2020 to 2021 is all pupils in S1 and S2 uh, take part in IDL experiences and these run from the summer term to Christmas term and then there'll be new experiences Christmas term um, to the new timetable change. So what we've got in school is planned experiences that um, pupils in S1, S2 will, will receive four IDL experiences by the time they leave S2 and move on to S3 and, and senior phase and so on. Um, but just what I was talking to Jenny about yesterday was the way in which we've been able to timetable this year. Um, what we've been looking at is, uh, like, like I said, we, we've, we've been trying to develop our IDL experiences for, for years now. Um, and, and over the last two or three years, we've identified that um, sometimes uh, IDL teachers who are paired up together to deliver these experiences have non-contact times together. And that's great because there they can collaborate, plan and reflect with each other. Um, but that doesn't always happen. And uh, previous to this session, uh, we hadn't made that a priority. We hadn't looked at that planning time within the timetable. Um, as a priority. So for this session, um, our timetabler has, has been able to get the teaching time for the ideal teachers at the same time, which gives the pupils great uh, choice. So they're choosing which ideal experience they want to take part in. But what he's also been able to do is he's been able to align the non-contact periods for these 10 teachers uh, so that they are all uh, on non-contact at the same point in the week. And that's had a huge impact, even in the five, six weeks of this term, um, where staff are able to come together and, and have the time to plan and cooperate with each other. Um, and it's weekly. And it means that we've got a real focus and a real attention on the experiences that are happening in these IDL uh, classes for our pupils. We're, we're noticing a huge difference. It's quite a subtle change on the face of it to have that time built in. Um, but but it's, we're, we're seeing a huge impact so far. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, it's going to be a really interesting journey to watch. And just that attention for that planning, that collaboration and that time. Jenny, could I jump in? Sorry. Yeah, please. It was it was funny, and I don't mean to be provocative, um, but it's interesting that um, Cameron, you picked out the word plan because for me it was the word that jars. 
Um, mm-hmm. For me, the ideal is the thing that isn't planned. It's the thing that's lived. Um, and I, I would argue that you can sort of plan for a lived experience to happen, but the emphasis on planned is, is slightly problematic because if it's overly planned or it depends on who, I suppose, is, is planning for that experience, it, it potentially becomes contrived and, and put into a, a tick box culture. And so for me, IDL happens really naturally when children start to feel an experience and through that lived experience, they start to make connections. And it's a thing then that you don't plan for or can't be planned for because suddenly you are exploring one stimulus and very quickly you find uh, numeracy or languages or history or sport or, or whatever it is. And it should be the moment that sort of the silos start to break down in a really beautiful way. Um, and, and it's always, I think, the tension within a secondary school curriculum is how do you allow for that to happen? Um, where in the primary, I, I would argue it's probably slightly easier. Um, and so for me, it was it was just super interesting. And I don't want to hijack, obviously, this beautiful session, but the, a conversation between this idea of the curriculum as a lived experience or planned for, um, that would be my little uh, thought th- bubble throwing in there. No, it's always good. I You're love absolutely it. right. If, sorry, Jenny. No, carry on, please, Cameron. I was just, I was just going to come, come back and discussion. That's okay. You're absolutely right. Um, and, and what you've identified is, is, like, is also the choice um, that, that pupils have because um, you're absolutely right that the pupils are choosing where they're taking their learning and, and, and through these ideal experiences, they have, therefore have ownership over the learning that's taking place. Um, the, the point that I'm highlighting that we've been able to do in our school um, is bring staff together to, to plan the, the if, if you like, the parameters of the experience that, that we're offering, offering the, the, the pupils. Um, and also a lot of the time is taking up, making good connections with our business links and organisations in the community. So it's allowing our staff to work together and speak to each other um, so that we have a very, very clear message for the experience that the, the, that the pupils are getting. Um, and, and just the I, I will stop talking just a second. Um, but, but the last thing I would say on that point as well about the choice is um, what we're very pleased to be able to do is give as much choice to the pupils as possible. Um, and that comes down to the title of our IDLs. Um, so, so pupils have the choice um, of which IDL to go into. And we, pr- we propose questions to the pupils. So we've got a hook for them. It gets them interested. And then from those bigger driving questions, they're able to take and their learning within that theme, if you like, um, and and uh, get get a lot of out, get a lot out from it. Mm. For, for me, it's always that interesting question: Do you want a tea or coffee, or do you want something to drink? And uh, mm. I use it all the time because the idea of choice becomes interesting when the adult is the person who decides what the choice is. Uh, and and I totally understand that there has to be sort of. Um, um, sort of rationale behind it, but but within that is there's a there is a need to sort of move away from the idea of parameters where a young person, I don't believe, there should be parameters set within an IDL project because it kind of should be allowed to go anywhere. And for me, that's the joy of, of IDL and that's where it should feel different from other things. And final point, if the teachers are meeting together, could that meeting be with the children to decide what choices are possible? That would be my final thought. And I'm sorry, Jerry, for jumping in. <laughs> I think really interesting points and you know I think this is the whole debate about IDL about how you can make it happen within the constrictions that we have in our schools. Julia are there any other questions or things to note in the chat pane? Um, there's been lots of interesting chat Jenny. Uh, a few comments initially also about planning which jumped out for a few people as maybe surprising or not what they would agree with. Um, Matthew said um, the definition assumes disciplinarity. Um, What if we take the disciplines away? That's obviously, um, you know, hard when you're starting with the secondary curriculum as it is. Um, uh, Penny's made some really nice comments about her own experience. Um, It's always about when children and young people have the freedom to follow their own fascinations and inquiry. Um, their interest, creativity, engagement and motivation increases. Ruth says the unplanned learning is very scary, but often the most valuable. 
Hi, sorry, Lindsay here from um, the Foundation. I just want to have a comment. Just, I, kind of, I, I kind of was listening to Paul and Cameron. I think there's something in both of those, really. I, th I don't think they need to be at loggerheads. Almost it's like we need to plan for the spaces for that learning to happen, and there needs to be structures. And I think that's where the reimagining the curriculum comes in and reimagining what second day looks like. And that does take planning and, and well, take you know, looking at timetabling and the kind of logistics, but then allowing the sort of freedom for gene inquiry, and that's where the unplanned may happen once the, the structures and spaces have been created. So that was just, I think, there, I kind of saw both points there. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, Dalipa says, uh, what if we allow IDL to be freewheeling where the adults, teachers, are only facilitating whatever interest the child has? Really interesting point. So much to think about. And, you know, I think that's why, you know, IDL is complex. Um, thank you for those. Please keep adding the chat pane. I'm going to keep moving on just now. And just kind of over the last while, looking at some of the opportunities that are out there, um, um, Julie and I have both just been at the, um, the Daydream Believer session that came just before this and camper van, van of dreams, um, it would just sound like the most fantastic IDL um, project that's going on with collaboration between universities, colleges, schools, partners and in industry. Um, it's on the Daydream Believer site, so it's a great one to look at. Um, also, you know, really interesting to look at TDL works are doing. There's lots of resources on there. Look at the deck, the design, engineer, and construct. We were really fortunate with David Miller from the School of In Innovation from Kelvinside Academy. He was on our, our work stream um, with the IDL and really interesting to see what they're doing in their senior phase um, as an option in the senior phase that is not part of the exam diet and the benefits for that. In this whole festival, Paul, absolutely is ideal, and I am just absolutely loving it all. And we have the Accelerate program in with the Wood Foundation in Aberdeenshire. And thank you, Cameron, for sharing, sharing where you are in your journey. It's a really interesting one to watch. And I feel, you know, what they are doing in the share is, you know, bold and brave. So, so thank you. So there is a lot going on and, you know, again, during COVID, we saw people in social media and stories and, you know, in talking to different schools about different approaches to IDL. But I wonder if we could maybe pause again and think, you know, what are the ingredients needed for high quality IDL? You know, or have you seen an IDL that project initiative that's really made an impact? It'd be really great if we could share some of these and if you could add your thoughts in the chat pane or just please talk keep the conversation going i'm happy to pop in here again you can see it's my passion i'm really interested in uh, you know that notion of immersive learning immersive inquiry with creativity and innovation at the heart um, and i think you know talking to our student i take the bus by university but talking to our students and the teachers we work with thinking about how we can frame learning um, it was what Japanese said about um, inter this interconnectedness, but also that it's real, it's relevant, it's real world, it's solving problems now, it's future facing. So yeah, very very interesting. I I have I'm curious about um, I suppose skills of teachers and people creating the people behind creating those spaces. What are the sort of um, core skills that you as I suppose learning designers or whatever word want to use? Um, really need to focus on to then be able to provide that because it feels like that the space that you create is the key bit almost um, and that feels like it's uh, maybe the skills are a little different or or pulling on different things to be able to create a an effective enough space so I'm just curious about you know what those might be and and how that may be different for maybe even different age groups um there were a couple of lovely comments in the chat, uh, if I can find them now, from um, Dilipa and Paul. Dilipa said, um, the ingredients you need are not the act, they come. And Paul said, it's about noticing what happens around you, then figuring out what matters and then taking action. 
So I, I'm Joan, and um, I am the person I work with, um, Elizabeth and Julia and Jenny. It's really interesting watching this thread and listening to this conversation, isn't it? Because sitting within it are the very tensions that people are trying to reconcile. And my plea is to all of us to kind of gather around this because we're around a campfire and not take up positions because, you know, I, I find that tension that you're all kind of voicing here inherent in my own self. Um, and, you know, th that tension between the need for um, organising direction and some people are suggesting that's control as well as you know, being led by the learner. And I think we just have to accept that that's a tension which sits here, um, especially as you apply it in different contexts where, um, you know, so, so look at the contrast, for instance, between a really good early year setting and a really good secondary school. And there are different tensions and constraints around all of that. And I suppose my plea is knowing the world we inhabit just now, which is quite a tense one, where things like education, even our young people, um, political uh, debate swings back and forth and tries to control what happens to them. And I think I don't need to say any more than that. I think you all know what I'm referring to there, and that's not particularly getting better, but we all know there's an opportunity now to do something different, is that for all the freedom that some of us want to do this, there's an equally strong group who want the complete opposite. Um, and, and that's usually politicised heavily. And I think we're going to see that debate played out at all sorts of levels in Scotland and across the UK in the next year or so. Um, yeah. Right, so, so Paul, you're coming in. This is what I love about Paul, he's coming in. Identifying the tensions are brilliant, ignoring them is a problem. Um, so it is how we hold that conversation and keep them both in play and find ways to kind of resolve the things that cause the, cause the tensions. So I suppose I'm just saying to this group in particular to um, recognize that and to support each other in, in you know, to support everybody on the call getting to the point that we all want to get to, which is constantly moving forward. Um, so, uh, that's just my plea, watching it all play out as I do and having to answer some of the questions from the, the greatest, um, ob the greatest um, objectors to anything that looks like freedom for children in our system. So. Sorry, if I, if I could jump in there, because I, I know that I um, put that comment and I know it's, again, probably um, slightly provocative, but the the ideal of polarisation within society is really interesting because I would argue that polarisation in society has happened because we have suffocated debate and we have suffocated opinion and as a result we don't know how to manage these uncomfortable yeah. conversations and it's so so important and what I see in, in some of the schools that we work with is an inability to like jump in at the deep end and have these difficult conversations and, and holding those spaces and it is about saying well there's tensions here of course there's tensions like we're, we're working within uh, a framework where there's lots of great areas and again we go well, great let's explore those great areas and rather than saying we've got the solution and I think one of the things that this festival is really proudly done is say that none of us hold the solutions that we all have to be more humble and say we don't know but yeah. what we never should do is not ask the question or notice the things that are all around us and are blatantly obvious to everybody by just saying well let's just keep doing it the same and repatching and and it's not a repatching anymore it's a reimagining and I think reimagining is is probably going to be really uncomfortable um and it, it, it will only be done by bringing groups like this together and going, great, let's get the sort of, um, we call it WD-40 out, let's give ourselves a massage, let's find somebody else to massage and get those tensions to a point where we can start to move again. But because of the stresses of the world, we know that those tensions are probably going to come back next week and we go, that's fine, let's keep on this process. And so, yeah, there's agreement and difference. And, and I think that word and is, is the important thing and it's what IDL is all about. It's literacy yep. and it's not literacy or maths, it's literacy and maths, it's maths and and that process we just keep going and as long as our teachers sort of 
allow themselves to go into that space, then I think we'll be in a better place than we are at the moment. I promise I won't say anything else. I promise, promise, promise. <laughs> Please do, because it's the conversations. You know, that this was the whole, what we really wanted from the thought paper was those stimulating those conversations. And, you know, it's only when you hear different viewpoints that you help to clarify what your own one is and, you know, how you can move forward. But I think, you know, one of my own observations is that all these things take time. And, you know, we've been working up some sessions um, in the Curriculum Innovation team with Joni Elizabeth and, you know, the PLL team. And what we're finding more and more is that people need time to talk, reflect, think, disagree, agree, um, have different viewpoints. And, you know, I think you, that is so important. Um, and I think, you know, that's what I heard coming through really strongly at Kemney and from Cameron was that time and taking the staff with them on the journey. Um, so yeah, all, all really good points. Any Can I, um, oh yeah. sorry, Jenny, <laughs> it's Chris here. I wonder if I could just um, put something forward from the pupils' point of view, because I think people, some people in the chat are actually looking for practical ways forward. Um, and I have, been in classes where we have been looking at IDL with the children. The children have almost definitely been leading their own learning, their own inquiry, and the way in which they want to present their learning. So there's a lot of personalization and choice, um, but there's also a lot of really excited chat in those classrooms. And I wish that we could maybe have a snapshot or have some of the pupils in here to hear them describe their learning because they have had, like Penny was saying, the freedom to follow what they're looking at. Their interest has been piqued. And I think one of the key things that the teachers have done by getting together is giving the children a question and the way in which they answer that question has been left largely to the children. So it's been great to hear them go off and decide who they would like and, and my job is to find them somebody to ask those questions of. So especially in this context where we're all virtual, that's been very interesting. And the children have, um, the young people have some very wonderful ideas about who they would like to ask their questions of. So, and that is also at Kemeny where, where Cameron is. Um, but there was one young person who actually went home and talked about the IDL class that they had been in for the entire evening to their parents and their sibling who's in an older you know an older person within the school so that's what I would like us to capture as well and think about partly um the pupils like that that was really interesting in terms of that pupil perspective that's really helpful and I'm kind of kind of going circling back around to my sort of I quest, the question in my head around the skills of the teachers mm -hmm. creating those environments and it kind of strikes me that it's the skills that we that we want in the learners actually are the skills that are required in the facilitators. So that's the sort of almost the, it's a, it feels a bit like a catch twenty two sometimes if you're asking or trying to encourage people who don't necessarily have had that experience and those skills to create those spaces. That's maybe where a bit of the tension and the reluctance and the nervousness comes. Um, but yeah, so I just wonder if that's a sort of if that's a if I, you know, having come here new, not really understand, not really knowing anything about IDL previously, that feels like something that's quite relevant. That's a really good point. And that was same in the thought paper. You know, that was one of the key considerations of the group. What is the role of the teacher? You know, is the teacher a coach, facilitator, you know, moving away from the traditional view of a teacher? So, yeah, that is a really, really good point. And I think, you know, that's, what we see happening in the high quality IDL, that move, and I know that um, at Kemney, you know, we've been talking about that as well. Um, but yeah, and actually, what does it look like for the young people? If they're going home talking about it, they're excited about it, they're engaged. You know, that that's one key ingredient, isn't it? That, um, that or and maybe that's part of the, the output. Um, There's one comment about from Ingrid that teachers needing to be trusted to follow their instincts and um, good IDL will happen naturally in the primary classroom when teachers are encouraged to go within themselves and yeah 
trust in their own judgment. I can, I'm happy to I'm happy to step in a little on that one, um, if that's okay, Jenny. Yes, please. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm now working at the university um, in the School of Education and I have had the privilege this last couple of weeks to be working with our postgrad students who have come in and uh, last week I did a, a lecture on IDL and I have to say that it was a really, for me it was a journey in itself preparing that lecture and making it meaningful and I found that when I delivered it I got quite emotional and the students really, really became, the chat was on fire and students were we were brainstorming left right and center about you know what that could look like in their classrooms and a couple of students put in the chat there i'm gonna i'm scared of getting political i'm scared of you know asking questions with, with helping my children asking questions that i can't answer because i'm scared of saying the wrong thing and you know, it led to a whole conversation about being brave and, and having conversations with you know with parents as well about things that are happening in the world right now and you know i ended up saying to them look this is your birthright as a teacher to to go down inside you and ask of yourself what are the key issues that make you human and helping your children to really connect with those and holding on to whatever happens it's like a roller coaster and going back to chris dunhill's point of you know where you see children really asking those big questions who can help us who can we get in to answer I think my point there in the chat was, you know, teachers need to feel trusted and supported, not just by parents, but by management, by the system. The system needs to support teachers to be allowed to feel brave enough to tackle issues that maybe we don't have all the, we don't have the answers to ourselves, but my God, if we can go and help our children to explore and we can be prepared to learn about these things, then the world is gonna look you know, the world eventually, may not in my lifetime, but hopefully the world will look like a better place in 50 years. But if we don't do that, and if our teachers aren't supported to have those difficult conversations and be prepared to go inside and trust what the process, it's not going to happen. That's my, I'm going to do a poll. I'm going to shut it up now. <laughs> no, that is great. Thank you. And that's exactly what this whole festival is about, isn't it? Being creatively brave. So thank you for sharing that. I'm just very conscious of the time. I wish we had longer to chat. Um, I'm just going to pause on this one just for a little minute. But, you know, in the refresh narrative, we talk a lot about the why, the what, and then how do we do it? And this is the curriculum making map, if you like, in the refresh narrative. And I'm just going to pause here for a couple of minutes, but it's uh, an interesting one. You know, where should we invest in our energy? So I'm going to leave that one with you because um, I think we would want to invest our energy across them all, but where does it need to go most? And that would depend on each setting, in each individual teacher, with each class. But you know, really, you know, understanding your learners as well is so important. And I wish more time to talk about that. I'm very conscious of the time. And what I really want to do, and Ingrid, you just set that up beautifully for me in mean, the last two minutes. Um, you know, we want this conversation to carry on. So what is your brave takeaway going to be from this conversation today? What are you going to take away to light another flame and take with you back into your own setting, your own school, your own environment? It'd be really great if you wanted to share some of these on the chat pane. That'd be great. Or if you just want to take them away yourself. Um, we would also like to say that you know that this PowerPoint and also the thought paper will be in the tool shed. And Julia, as soon as this film's ready, I think it's going to be in the tool shed as well. Yes, it will. We'll be sharing on the on the festival site. So um, you know, we'd love to keep this conversation going. If there's any bits, you know, from the PowerPoint today, any slides that you think could be useful to take back to start other conversations, take that flame and ignite it somewhere else, you know, please do or drop us an email. We're happy to send it on to you. Um, you know, the, the festival's carrying on with lots more conversations and the collaboration cafe. You know, please join up for other sessions. Um, but we have, I think we've one minute left. I wonder, Joe, if you might want to have the last word about some of the things going forward at Education Scotland? 
Yeah, just to say that this is this has um, been really, really helpful for us, you know, just uh, almost giving all of us courage to kind of push ahead because every so often you come up against a barrier uh, in organisations like ours where, you know, big question marks are held over you but nobody can articulate them. So this gives us courage to go ahead and we want to keep on, you know, pushing forward and being bold and we've got plans for this year about how we support people um, to do all of this at, um, at their own level so um wherever they are so thank you for this um it's been really good thank you all very much indeed um, and yeah look forward to seeing where these brave moments take us in the future it's it's an exciting time to be bold be brave be bold and go forward thank you very much indeed we will be around if anyone wants to stay on for further chat i'm going to stop presenting now so i can see the chat here thanks everyone